Hi and welcome. This is an indicator that I found in one of Robert Carver's books and it allows us to catch early breakouts. In this video I will show you how we can use this indicator then we will code it in Python and automate it in a simple strategy for a quick backtest where I also included the spread commission fees in the code. The Python code is available for download from the link in the description of this video so you can enjoy the video, download the code and use it for your own experiments. The indicator is simple. We will consider the rolling maximum over the last number of days provided that in this example we are working on the daily time frame then we will also consider the rolling minimum over the last n days and the rolling average which can be obtained from the maximum and the minimum using this expression where the rolling average is equal to the rolling maximum plus the rolling minimum divided by two we can code this indicator in python and this is the result for daily gold prices we can see the rolling maximum minimum and average over 20 days in this example the author of this indicator robert carver also derived a scaled price indicator which is equal to the uh, closing price minus the rolling price divided by the amplitude or the maximas range so it's the difference between the rolling maximum and the rolling minimum so the scaled price will vary between plus 0.5 if the current price is at the top of its range and minus 0.5 if the price is at the bottom of the range. As stated by the author himself, this indicator can be used to detect and catch breakouts. So when the scaled price is greater than zero, we assume we have a long setup. And when the price crosses below zero, we have a short setup. There are different variations of this indicator that we can use in many different ways. One thing for sure is that on its own, this indicator is not a full trading strategy, but it can be a powerful tool to detect trend changes. Okay, now we'll go through the Python code and we'll take the indicator for a quick spin. Backtesting a very simple strategy to sense what we can expect in reality. I will also include spread trading commissions in our backtest, so the results are as realistic as possible. Okay, so this is our Jupyter Notebook file that you can download from the link in the description of the video. First cell is just for loading the data. I'm loading the gold data here, the daily time frame. Uh, I'm just cleaning the GMT time, replacing the fractions of seconds, uh, casting to date time, the GMT time column, cleaning the uh, non-movement candles where the high is equal to low, and resetting the index, computing the ATR that we might be using later on in the backtesting part. Then I'm defining this function called rolling max. This is the explanation and what it takes as arguments it takes the uh, data frame the uh, column name high and the window size which is equal to 10 by default but you can change this and the new column name which is the rolling maximum name and it's going to compute just the rolling max over the last few days for example or few candles so the window is equal to window size here by default it's equal to 10 we might be changing this later on when we're using the function same thing for rolling minimum. It's going to compute the rolling minimum over the last few candles. And the rolling average function is just computing the uh, sum between the first column, the second column, and dividing these by two. Obviously, we're going to use the rolling high and the rolling low for these column one and column two, because by definition, this is how we obtain the, the rolling average price. Then the uh, scaled price function is going to take, again, the data frame, the closing column name, so it's close, the uh, rolling average, the uh, rolling maximum, rolling minimum, and the new column name where it's going to store the results, which is equal to scaled price by default. So I'm just using the defaults here. It's going to compute the difference between the closing price and the average, the rolling average column price divided by the uh, difference between the maximas and the minimas. And that's it basically. Now we are defining n, which is a variable to uh, find the width of the window, of the rolling window and we're using 25 days in this case. So we're computing the rolling max, the rolling minimum, the rolling average, and the scaled price. And here we're just calling the describe function to check what are the extremas or the maximas and the minimas for each of these columns. We're checking the rolling maximum, the rolling minimum, and the scaled price. We can see that the maximum and the minimum of the scaled price is between minus 0.55 and the maximum is around 0.5. So with the exception of a few values that are dropping below minus 0.5. Usually the uh, scale price is between minus 0.5 and 0.5. Now in this cell, I'm plotting the candles, the open, high, low, close price, and the curves. I'm plotting the maximas, the minimums, and the average price, as well as the uh, scaled price that we can see here. So between minus 0.5 and 0.5. 
we can change the slice that we are plotting. So if I'm starting, let's say at uh, slice zero, now we can start at slice 300 up to 600. And we can see it's another example of how the extremas are showing on the graph, on the chart, and the scaled price as well. Now there are different ways to generate signals, trading signals from this indicator. I've defined this uh, function called generate signal. It takes the data frame and two thresholds. The first threshold one is the positive threshold, so 0 0.5. Threshold two, I'm going to change it to minus 0 0.5 here, and it's going to be the negative threshold. We're going to see how to use it in a minute. And the new column name is equal to total signal, which is where we're going to save our new values or the triggering signal for entering the market. And the idea is that if you have scaled prices below the threshold one, and then it crosses in the following candle to above the uh, threshold one, then we have uh, a case where we're crossing from below 0 0.5 to above 0 0.5. Well, this is just to introduce the idea of a threshold. So if we have this uh, scaled price crossing above the threshold, then we consider we have a breakout here. It's breaking above the recent high of the last 20 or 25 days. And this is where we have a breakout in the long direction. Now, in the opposite direction, if we have a breakout from above the minus 0 0.5 to below the minus 0 0.5, which is threshold two, in this case, we have a breakout in the short direction. And I'm going to replace these values in the function here by threshold values. So this is threshold one, threshold one, and the threshold two, which is the negative one, I'm going to put it right here. So this way we have a more versatile function. I'm going to run it to compute the new signal and it's going to create a new uh, column in our data frame, which is called total signal. And I'm going to value counts within this column. How many signals do we have? So we have 11 short signals and two long signals. And this is because these conditions will test for each candle in the data frame if the previous scaled price was below the threshold one and the current scaled price is above the threshold one. So we crossed above 0 0.5 in this case. In this example, we have a long breakout, a long breakout signal. So we return two and we score this as the signal, which is the long signal. In the opposite direction, if we are crossing below minus 0 0.5, which is threshold two, we return one as a signal. And this is our short signal. And now we can plot some of these signals. These are the purple points that we've added here on the chart. So these are short signals here. This one is also a short signal. So this is the daily time frame. It's not very impressive, but it's actually forecasting, at least on the short term, a downward movement. As we can see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to test it very quickly in a very simple way. Again, the purpose of this video is not to present a full trading strategy, just to introduce Robert Carver's breakout signal and as an indicator and also how to code it and introduce it in Python and backtest it very quickly. So for the backtest, I'm using backtesting.py as usual. I'm defining my strategy here. We're trading with 10% of the current equity. So this is the size of the, the equity. And the take profit stop loss ratio is equal to 1.5 as a constant for now. And the way we're going to set the um, stop loss and take profit. So first of all, for the short positions, we're going to open a sell position. So that's a short signal and we're only allowing one trade at a time, one open trade at a time on the market. So usually when the breakout happens, we're going to put a limit. We expect a small retracement. This is a short breakout. We will be putting a limit that is equal to the current high or the current candle plus 1% of the current high. So it's just above the current high of the current candle. If the price retraces back to that value, we open a sell position. If the breakout continues, we're not catching the trend because we assume we're too late to enter the market. The stop loss is going to be um, within a 2% distance from the current high. And the take profit is defined according to the take profit stop loss ratio, which is here 1.5. If an order is not fulfilled uh, yet, and we have signal in the opposite direction, we're going to cancel it. This is what this small for loop here does and as well here. So whenever we have any order, any new order is going to cancel the previously uh, open but non-fulfilled uh, or non-traded order. And for the backtest, I'm using an optimization first. We're going to optimize this distance. So the take profit stop loss ratio, it's one parameter to be optimized. A starting cash of 25,000 and a commission of 0 0.0002. 
and that's the value that's provided in the backtesting.py documentation to account for the average spread of uh, spread cost when trading forex. Now the backtest shows 35% in returns and a maximum drawdown of minus 13%, so that's not really bad. A win rate of 66%, which is also not bad. A very low number of trades. This is the, uh, the problem of this uh, strategy working on the daily time frame. So we need to run it on more than one asset at a time to get enough trades during a month. And we can actually print the uh, backtesting results for all the uh, take profit stop loss ratios that were tested. So if it's equal to one, we have 21% in returns. Uh, if it's 1.1, it's 25%, and so on. And in this case, the optimization chose the maximum. It's probably somewhere around 35, so that's 1.3. I don't think we have any better result here. So yeah, 1.3 as a take profit stop loss ratio. If we keep it to 1.5, as we've started, it's going to be 15%, but something between one and 1.5 is a good sweet spot for this uh, type of trading. Now we can also proceed with them um, much simpler backtest instead of passing orders or placing orders on uh, on the market waiting for some retracement we can simply open the position a buy and a sell providing a stop loss and take profit values related to the uh, ATR to the average true range so the size is equal to 10 percent so we're trading with 10 percent of the equity the stop loss coefficient we're starting with 1.1 so that's uh, that means that the stop loss distance is equal to 1.1 times the current ATR. And this is how we're going to place our stop loss considering the current volatility of the market because of the ATR. And then the uh, take profit is actually 1.5 times the distance of the stop loss. But this is going to change when we're going to optimize. So we're not going to stick with 1.1 and 1.5 because we're calling the optimize function here. And we're changing the stop loss coefficient within a range of values as well as the take profit stop loss ratio. So if I run this, it's going to take a bit of time because it needs to optimize the parameters and try and test all the combinations of these stop loss coefficients and take profit stop loss ratios. But when it's done, we can see that we don't have a lot of returns. It's just 10% with maximum a drawdown of minus 6%. And if we plot the heat map, it's actually mostly negative, unless if we stick to a ratio of one stop loss coefficient and a take profit stop loss ratio of one as well. So one by one, we're going to get around 11%. So it's nothing very impressive. The previous approach was much better using uh, orders instead of opening the positions straight on the market. Anyway, remember that we're just using one very a uh, simple indicator that we presented in a book and we uh, it's actually a good indicator to detect breakouts but it doesn't mean that it can be used on its own as a full trading strategy but nevertheless using those orders and percentages uh, for uh, putting the stop loss and the take profits it actually provided a very impressive result for any take profit and stop loss ratio so for any value that we can take here it's always going to be positive and don't forget that we've added a small commission fee here. So this is including commissions. This is because when we're trading on the daily time frame, usually the uh, returns are greater, are higher per trade, and they are enough to cover for the trading fees. And that's it for this video. Let me know what you think about this indicator. I really like the fact that it makes detecting breakouts easier. If you have any ideas, please don't hesitate. Leave them in the comments below. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.